Hello and welcome to a very special Gamescom themed uh, new review podcast in association with Rams Radio. Uh, it's very special because it's 2011, this podcast is going to be 20 minutes and 11 seconds and we're going to talk about what we've been doing here at Gamescom. <laughs> Noob review. I've got with me Rich, aka Raxus. Hello. And who are you, sir? Introduce yourself. I'm Adam Freeman, and I'm from GamingLife.com. So, what have we been doing here, Adam? Tell us what we've been doing. Well, we were very fortunate to be <coughs> contacted, recruited, selected, <laughs> allowed, accosted, accosted, <laughs> bribed um, <laughs> by. EA's UK community manager Dan Sheridan uh, you may have seen him on Twitter it's EA underscore action man he very kindly offered to bring us out to Gamescom and take us behind closed doors with all of EA's lineup for the rest of the year and we've had the privilege of spending Gamescom with him with EA on EA's tab looking at EA stuff it's been fantastic so we've seen five games primarily we've seen a lot more than that but the, the main five ones are Mass Effect 3 Battlefield 3 uh, Kingdoms of Amalur, Reckoning, got that wrong yesterday, on. <laughs> Need for Speed The Run, and The Old Republic, and The Old Republic, Star Wars yeah. The Old Republic, so out of the five, w- which would you say was your favourite, which was the most impressive, Rich? Uh, for me, I'm, um, I was loving Need for Speed, I think the autolog feature that they use there and have continued to develop and expand is an is a industry changing feature, allowing asynchronous gaming, and everyone loves asynchronous gaming. Um, uh, and just letting uh, games with lives, uh, with real lives, not to be confused necessarily with the website, um, um, <laughs> games with real lives to play against each other and compete against each other. So the, the other thing about Need for Speed that was um, interesting, as well as the autolog, is that it's a racing game that's got a story in it, mm. which didn't, when, when I heard that, I was, yeah. it's kind of, yeah, kind of <laughs> tweaked, but... It seems to really work. It seems to be a genuine reason for why you're racing across the country. Yeah. And it's, it seems to be quite compelling. And yeah. yeah, rather than a set of random tracks, it's seemingly suspended in virtual ether. Um, and a whole bunch of drivers who you only know by name, you're now talking about racing against uh, p- people, faces, uh, that you recognise characters, and also uh, having a journey that has a beginning and an end, um, and presumably a middle, um, certainly seem to have. Um, and that I think gives you more um, kind of connection into the game in terms of uh, commitment and, and desire to, to, to perform the tasks requested of you. So I think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So let's talk about Kings of, Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. Yeah. Um, we had the privilege to interview Ken Ralston, which hopefully by now you'll be able to see and hear the interview we had with him. Um, and what, what do you think of Ken and the game? Oh, without question, he is the most incredible man we had the opportunity to talk to this week. He was so friendly, so energetic. I mean, I, I don't know how old Ken is, but let's just say he's, you wouldn't think to look at the guy. He was the youngest of games developers, but the energy he had for that project is absolutely insane. And Amalur was fantastic, really good. Mm-hmm. It does, and the main thing that he was focusing on was the combat that he was demoing. Um, did you go hands on? How did you? I I went hands on. I had my hands all over it. Yeah, no, it was good. No, really strong. I think um, you've got options around um, both two weapons that you can have kind of uh, available at any one time, but also a bunch of kind of skills and magics that you can use, and um, you can combine those up. You can quick switch between them in the middle of a combo. It really is pretty incredible the kind of options you have around that, and you can really customize the character and uh, and enjoy playing like that. So. Certainly, um, if you were to look at it purely as an action game, which is certainly more than that, but, uh, but as an action game, it's, it's really strong, one of the best I've played in terms of combat and uh, movement and defence, and you have to kind of you know, parry and stuff like that, yeah, very strong. And then you've got the awesome kind of story and RPG elements and skills and stuff. So the RPG elements, you've got three kinds of, kinds of crafting. You've got sage crafting, which mm-hmm. is crafting gems to go on weapons. Yep. Um, you've got blacksmithing to create brand new weapons and the third one is I can't remember (laughs) sage crafting blacksmithing and the other one which is really good and we like very much oh potion alchemy Alchemy. Uh, that was it to create potions to to buff your abilities and get your health back and things like that and I think it's also worth mentioning the um, uh, cool item system as well. It's kind of got an automatic item generation algorithm. So rather than picking up um, you know, the same object over and over again, you're going to be picking up 
Um, pretty individual op um, items, particularly on the weapon side, that you can kind of, you know, you really have to make a choice rather than just have, oh, this is the best sword in the game, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go and find that and I'm done. Um, so you're going to be able to have that. They've also got really complex um, set uh, bonuses. So when you equip a set of equipment, if it's if they're all kind of a coherent set, part of a coherent set, you get big bonuses for equipping two or three or four parts of that. So, so you can go and chase that if you want to as well. But uh, we've already been told that you won't necessarily find that the whole set is the best um, option in every situation. You may want to swap in one or other part of that set to uh, with a specific item to give you a particular bonus in a particular situation. So all good stuff from an RPG fan point of view. Yeah. And technical aspects aside, just looking at the game, it's beautiful. Yeah. There's so much colour and it's so fluid and for an action game, especially an action game that has very, very deep RPG elements that you can either get involved in or just mm. leave leave to one side and just plow on. Mm. It plays so so smoothly. Yeah. And it just feels so natural when you're getting into it that, yeah, I can't wait for that one. Really good. And the, the other interesting thing about it is the lack of a class system. Well, there's classes in it, but it's a lot more fluid than just saying, okay, well, I'm a mage, and now I will do magey things for the rest of the game. Yeah. Um, and you can assign uh, your skill points when you level up to um, different abilities yep. um, across the board. So you can have... Yep. Um, as, as Ken said in the interview, you'll have a warrior and he'll suddenly realise that, hang on, if I put a few points into mage, I can suddenly teleport behind <laughs> enemies when mm. I dodge mm. and then smack, smack them in the head. Mm. And that, mm. that is very, very uh, cool. And in, and in a, set, a little bit the same way that you have um, set bonuses for having equipment sets, um, you also get, in essence, ability bonuses, and these are called like destinies, destiny cards, and they, they basically function in the sense that um, once you have the prerequisite spent points in the certain abilities, they create like a template, and that matches one or one or more of the destinies. And then those destinies are available, and they they um, buff you even more than just using your normal abilities. So you can swap in and out which destinies you're using, and etc. It's a it's a really uh, I think a really um, rich uh, setup in terms of how you can play the character and all the options surrounding them. But it's also they've approached it in a nice, fresh way and, and layered in the really cool, fluid um, combat engine, which which looks awesome. So yeah, real a real winner. So we've talked about Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. Mm -hmm. We've talked about Need for Speed: The mm -hmm. Run. Should we talk about a tiny game you might not have heard of? Uh, it's called Battlefield Three. It's a kind of a niche title. Battlefield. No, right. no I've not heard of it. No. Mm. Have, have you seen those guys down at the? Um, at Gamescom, who were going prone randomly. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah, I wasn't. Is Internet that connected? sensation. And, and this is to, well, I should probably check out Battlefield Three because uh, going prone that seems pretty awesome. You, you're halfway through writing a an article for why uh, Battlefield three, three is quarters of the way through, but yeah, for it, it's a modern warfare killer. Yeah, I think it is. I mean. Um, I'm writing that from a point of view of I'm, I really want to serve the community here because games are expensive um, and um, do you want to have two kind of tactical military shooters um, or not? Well, probably you probably want to have one and also you want to prime invest in it and perfect it and really enjoy it and get your skills out of that. Why Battlefield 3? Um, very quickly. Um, one of the modes in Battlefield 3 encompasses about 80% of Modern Warfare 3 as an entire experience. There's then a considerable number of other modes, um, which include the use of things like jet fighters, uh, helicopters, tanks, etc., which aren't available in modern warfare at this stage, to, certainly not to that extent. Um, uh, it's got a fantastic physics engine. It really supports, the particular thing that I really like about it is it supports cooperative squad play, so you really get rewarded for healing, for... Suppressive fire, which is, I think, a new thing in the genre, really. Um, so you, you don't have to hit someone to score by firing at them. If you suppress them and, and make them, uh, you know, modify their assault behavior, then then you will get scored for that. And I think that's a novelty. It's using the Frostbite 2 engine, which is epic in terms of blowing the sides off buildings. Stunning. And Absolutely stunning. We, what's, I, I had the chance to just go and stand behind guys as they were playing Team Deathmatch. And having played this particular level that's set in an urban environment, a street with uh, buildings you can enter into and fire out from the windows on the upper floors, and I watched this one guy, he was constantly running out into the street and getting killed by the same person in the same window. He got killed about three or four times, and then a light bulb kind of switched on <laughs> in the back of his head. So he went, right, okay, he went into his kit customization, he picked a rocket launcher, he spawned, he ran out into the street, he fired his rocket, he got shot, he still got killed, but that rocket carried on going, and it took out the biggest chunk I've ever seen of a building. <laughs> And I was I couldn't even have conceived to have done that. But it changed the rest of the game. From that point on, you couldn't use that building to, yeah. to take that kind of advantage. So yeah. Frostbite 2, I've got a lot of love for that. 
Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, one of the things about uh, some of the classes in there is they're multi-role. So you might have a class of engineer that can take out um, vehicles, and you think, oh, well, there's no vehicles in, at a certain point in the level. There's still buildings that people hide behind, and you can just completely modify the landscape with your engineer, you know? So it's, uh, yeah, I really liked it. I played a lot of the Alpha, and I've got to say, I haven't been that excited about a kind of tactical shooter f since, really, they came out. Um, awesome. And, um, and the, the, the squad play in there is really cool as well. And uh, I really look forward to getting on there, hopefully with as many of everybody out there as possible.